that better? Uh, and I just want to point out I'm accompanied by our York County Library Finance Manager, Lee Smith. Thank you. Uh, I only have a few brief remarks to make this evening. I just want to tell you a little bit about some of the things that we've been able to accomplish at the library and some of the things that we're looking forward to in the upcoming fiscal year. Um, as many of you know, and Chairman Johnson um, spoke about so kindly last month, we launched our new bookmobile with funding from the Institute for Museum and Library Studies, as well as reserve funding from the library. And subsequent to that, we found out from the State Library of South Carolina that when they adjust the counties for population, the York County Library has the highest total statistical output for public library outreach in the state, which we think is a fantastic benchmark for our library. Um, also, we are continuing on with our branch enhancements and beautification across the system. So at every library facility, all five, you will see increased user experience with rearrangement of shelving, creation of new spaces, common areas, all of this happening without any significant or, or structural changes, um, just ways to help us modernize and best utilize the space that we already have. This month, we also recorded our highest ever quarterly reference statistics number. That's a number we use as another KPI for the library and something that's reported to the state. And so we had over 8,000 questions answered during that measurement period. We're also excited about the continued growth of our virtual library through services such as Hoopla and RB Digital that provide streaming content, ebooks, um, all kinds of downloadable and audio and video material that we would not necessarily be able to provide in hard copy, as well as the expansion of our hotspot lending program. This has been one of the most popular, most successful efforts that the library has launched in the past two fiscal years. Um, we'll be increasing to make hotspots available for free checkout from all five library locations. And we also, to con also continue the effort to diversify our physical collection with an emphasis on books and materials for small business, economic development, senior care, uh, families that have children on the autism spectrum, and some other specialized collections. With the value of a mill that we are, have used to calculate our budget, I'm very grateful and thankful to say that we are not uh, requesting any increase in our level of support from the county. We feel adequately supported and um, wish to maintain our, our positive and um, uh, forward mom momentum working with the county as our major funder. And with that, I will pass it over to Lee Smith, who will tell you a little bit more about our funding request for the upcoming year. Good evening. Um, as Jason mentioned, uh, with the increased value of a mill this year, we are not going to um, ask for an additional millage increase. So with that being said, um, the funds were, that are provided with the increased value of a mill um, are allowing us to request um, a 2.5% merit increase that I believe matches what the uh, county is planning to do as well as cover the increased cost of, um, from PIBA. It is also going to allow us to continue to expand our virtual library in addition to our mobile hotspot program. The remaining funds will be allocated to general expenses such as uh, printing, office supplies, vehicle and operation and maintenance, training, travel, um, a small little increase for our audit, <laughs> um, equipment maintenance, and public programs. Um, and I would just like to point out that we also had an increase in funds promised to us from the Friends of the Library that will also allow us to increase our programming. Um, so I would be happy to discuss anything that you see on here that looks significant to you, but uh, you know, we kept tried to keep it as tight as possible this year. Any any questions from anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Their raises are going to be based off their evaluations as well. It's not a flat raise; it's based off performance. Yes. Sir. Excellent. Anybody? I'll just say thank you for what you do. I know. My grandchildren use the library a good bit. That's wonderful news. 
That's great. Thank you all very much. Thank you Thank guys you. very much. Andy, you are on the clock. Yes, sir. Uh, just real quick, in um, uh, just to follow up on a couple things from last week and to bring one other thing to your attention, um, the volunteer incentive program, we've been continually working and fine-tuning those numbers as you've requested. We are taking that um, plan and the details of which to the advisory committee, which meets tomorrow afternoon at 5. We will also be bringing to the Justice and Public Safety Committee, as you requested, which meets at 3 o'clock Friday afternoon. Um, the equipment replacement plan also is being reevaluated. Um, re we have engaged Fitch to look at that, look at where they're allocated, look at where the stations are going to be, also to assess this Oakdale station issue for us and give us their professional opinion on that. Hopefully those, um, that data is forthcoming. I know we uh, kind of uh, tried to put the fire to them and get some information to as quick as possible. And I, they're, they're, they're a responsive bunch. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, but the advisory committee will also be hearing about that tomorrow evening. So in volunteer incentive plan and then the capital equipment replacement plan, both will be discussed by not only the advisory committee tomorrow at five, but also Justin's public safety uh, Friday afternoon at three. The fire board budget, um, as you know, we requested uh, last, last week a six-tenth of a mil increase um, for this volunteer, volunteer initiative. Um, we rem were there. That, that, that number's uh, still what stands from a management request. Um, but also, we believe that we can reduce the three-tenths of a mil that was recommended in the Bethel budget. Um, so we can recommend removing that one. However, I will stipulate that um, it's, I would ask that it, Council consider that be one or the other. I, I think the bodies, having bodies is, is of utmost importance. So the volunteer incentive plan, I think, certainly helps all of the departments. Um, and it will be, I, I believe, an effective program. But um, I, I know Bethel, with the rate of growth that they're seeing, they're going to need that. Now, they can either get it through the volunteer incentive program, which would be fabulous, or through a millage of their own um, through a three-tenth mill increase. But um, again, however council decides to go, and we can talk more about this on, on uh, Friday afternoon, if, if necessary, then um, that, that's fine. I, I do, again, I do ask that um, this, this particular request is a six-tenth of a mill increase in the Board of Rural Fire Control budget and then reduce the Bethel millage by the three-tenth that was previously recommended by management. And so the last thing I want to discuss, Ms., uh, Mr. Chairman, is <clears throat> I am not putting Riverview on your agenda Monday night for second reading. I met with him last night. There's been some confusion about what exactly all of this entails. Um, I think there was some confusion with some of the board members um, that the um, it, that we could hire the chief and bring their employees on full time, but they could stay a board and maintain themselves as a board. Um, if I was um, unclear with some of them, that's on me and I'll own it. But I was very clear with them last night that if, if they are not fully understanding that they can't be a board and also give all their employees to the county, then we will not proceed with second reading. We're just going to drop it. So they're going to need to take a decisive action other than the letter that I received in March about the employees, but I need them to take a, a decisive action that clearly says to council, we as a tax board, wish to remain a board or wish to not remain a board. So there needs to be some clarity for your sakes and certainly for ours. Um, I will say that um, this idea that I pitched last week about this financial consolidation of Riverview, Oakdale, and Leslie, um, that's predicated on this Riverview issue. And I think that's important to remember and we can discuss in more detail. Um, but the takeaways for y'all tonight is that we are moving forward and we will be meeting with the advisory committee on two of those uh, subject matter and um, with Justice Public Safety on Friday. Just so I understand that. So you're taking the point six volunteer incentive program to the advisory board tomorrow, then you'll take it to the Public Safety Committee on Friday and then we can discuss it Monday night. Yes, sir. And we'll, we'll have the feedback from that committee and the advisory board by Monday night. I would hope so. Yes, sir. All right. Sounds fair enough. Sounds like we wait till Monday. I've got a couple questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, just um, a couple specific to, to Bethel, but one um, about Riverview. What I didn't, I miss, I maybe misunderstood what you said, but what what was the relationship between being a, having that board and having paid paid folks? The, the idea is 
they, they have asked the county, they had asked the county that we hire a chief, that it be a county chief, and that their employees become county employees. Okay. So that, that's where the disparity comes in, in my mind, is you, the house is divided to a large degree. You've got an advisory committee with all of the personnel that's funded through that is now reporting to a completely different body. So it's, it, it needs to be one or the other. So, th so um, okay, so what you're saying is if they, if they have a, um, if they have a paid chief and, and paid firefighters, they do not need, they, or not that they do not need, but they can't have the board? I think practically, yes, you could maintain the board. The question is, is really how, what, what's, what's the role of the board at that point? Because all they have the, 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 their, their role is oversight of the money that's coming into that tax district. Sure, but those are county employees and the bulk of their money is gonna be personnel costs that the county will be I just think they need to be, I think everybody needs to be real clear on the fact that it's, it's not an if, it, in other words, they could, have, they could technically still have a board and all paid people at that department. They, they could have all paid people. I think the point I'm trying to make is, is that my recommendation then, and I think management's recommendation is, if this is the route they want to go, then they need to let the county manage the personnel and the effects of that that board if they don't or that that department if they don't and they say well we don't want to dissolve them then they just need to manage the department but i that's that's where you can't have one foot in the stream and one foot out of the stream let's just get in or get out and i think that yeah, would I, th I think there's some i think they may have, there may be some confusion on that but i'm confused too because i was under the impression michael that they didn't want that the chief did not want to be paid chief does not want to be paid so, so no. you, but you're talking about a paid chief. This would be hiring. This would be doing a search for a new chief. Oh, so he's not even going to be. He there. is not even interested in it. He is. He has been. He made that clear to Justice and Public Safety, and made it clear again last night to me and to the board in front of them that that's not his interest. Okay. So, so, so t basically, what you're saying is that you that is that that tax district is going. I just want to be sure I understand sure, sure. totally. Okay. That that tax district is going to could pay up to ninety eight thousand dollars a year for a paid chief. And the, uh, okay, versus a a volunteer chief who may or may not be the same one that they have now. So to that degree, to that degree, the pay range, if the county wasn't involved, they could set that pay rate. All right, so the, the, they could they could pay them whatever. But if the county's involved, we've got a uh, rate of pay that y'all adopted that that's part of our MGT study. We never, I can't think of a time that we've ever hired anybody at the absolute top of the range. It's, it's always towards the bottom of the range with, if you add, you know, certain ex levels of experience or accreditations, right. et cetera, that, that, that changes that by percentage, but it's never that high. Okay, I'm just, that was just, that was the max. Yes. But, but, the, but the county would be making that decision as opposed to a, as a, as a district board making that decision. Yes. Okay, so, okay. I just, I just want the, I want the people that are on that board to understand exactly that because I've had some calls too, and I just, I think they feel like they either have to have a board or if they if they want to go all paid, which they may support, then they feel like they can't can't be a board. Well, so. and, and I, then let me clarify my statement. This is what I told them last night. I would not recommend that model. It's either all or the other. It's one or the other, but not this hybrid idea where all the employees and a, a chief is a county employee and a board still sits in place. I think that's going to create more problems than it'll solve. That's my recommendation. Obviously, if, from a policy standpoint, if you disagree with that, that's the way it's going to be. Well, but, I mean, it's really up to the council person for for that area. But I just I just want to be sure everything's out there in in the open. Well, but, I tried to clarify last night. Andy, and, you're not saying that they can't, as a board, hire their own fire chief and all that. They can, do, that. That. They can, that, do, they can do that now. Yes, what you're saying is they can't let the county take over the personnel side and them still run a board and run the other part yeah of it. i think that, that's um, all or nothing but yeah. they, can, they can hire a chief if they want yes, they can, sir. They can have all that day. as they are and stay aboard so. yes sir yes sir okay okay so let's talk about bethel for just a yes, minute so um bill shanahan told me that um he was recommending at this point um after a few conversations um that he was going to recommend that we only bring in the two, the two paid people that were actually in the budget last year that we didn't hire. So we had already eliminated the, uh, the extra, um, I'm not sure how many, a um, couple paid people, three, maybe four more people. So, so he had already made the recommendation for that prior to the incentive plan um, based on what he's told me. 
And so what I'm asking is if that incentive plan, if everybody likes that incentive plan, what we would like to ask is that the, um, the um, $110,000 that was in our, in our budget for the two people actually be moved back to where it originally came from last year. It was in our account um, number 742. It came out of 742, which was um, automotive, and it went into account 180, which was wages and benefits. So if, if that incentive plan, we like that, we like that incentive plan idea. Um, but if that, if that is passed, if, if all the committees and the chiefs like that, then we would like to ask that that 110,000 that was for the two people be moved back from the one account into the automotive account. Yeah, I think that would certainly be part of any motion that would be made. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in a position, obviously, to um, speak for Mr. Shanahan in his absence, but if you're so inclined to make that motion as part of the overall budget, unless Kevin can point out some kind of glaring error from a from a accounting standpoint, um, that becomes a policy decision that y'all can make. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And at 617, Kevin uh, comes to Good the evening. Um, first thing, I handed out an updated millage calculation sheet. We've already talked about the two biggest changes there in the Rural Fire Board as well as Bethel. Any questions about that? Okay. I'd also like to give you all, we had a discussion last time regarding the landfill. I sent an e um, a email out with an Excel spreadsheet that outlined the last three years as well as the top ten customers for their various categories. Any questions about that email I sent out regarding the landfill? I'm going to be very honest. I got about a dozen emails from the county today, and my normal work. I never, I, I did not open your email. This other was, than, this was other a few than days I read ago. it and it said, maybe yesterday when we saw it, I literally read it and it said it's there, but I have, I have not. Okay. I don't know if anybody. In a nutshell, it, it shows to it. losses two of the thrust, two of the last three years substantial. Um, we're projecting a loss right now of $1.3 million for fiscal year 2019. Um, it's not sustainable. That landfill ordinance that changed that rate is not part of the budget ordinance. So make sure you all understand that. It's a risk to the general fund down the road if we don't address it or don't fix it. The biggest customer for the landfill, City of Rock Hill. You look on the spreadsheet, who's our biggest paying customer? City of Rock Hill. A lot of the county doesn't use that landfill. Customers have the ability to drop off up to 1,000 pounds of trash a month as a landfill for no charge if they live in the county, okay? Your house, my house, something like that. So there's no risk of trash being put on the side of the road or something like that. But I just wanted to, any questions about that? We'll have a discussion when that ordinance change comes before you in more detail. I just um, want to make a comment on that, Kevin. I did look at it and um, I think- Thank you, Alice. Oh, you're welcome. Um, just, I did I looked at it just for you. Um, actually, I thought it was another email when I opened it up. Anyway, um, well, that's kind of a kiss-up comment yeah, there. Yeah. I looked at it, Kevin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I look at it kind of like, I mean, I looked at the users, and I, actually that was very interesting to see who used it and, and how much. Um, but one of the things that I think is important for us to, to um, consider is that I look at it kind of like a, a gas tax. You know, the gas tax taxes those that are, are buying the gas. So it's taxing the people that are on the roads. So I'll... I, I'm going to uh, support what you're saying as far as the, um, or what, you know, David and everybody said as far as the, um, the landfill, only because the users are who needs to pay for it. And it's, and it's, not, it's not meaning that the, um, basically the taxpayers are having to use it. It's, it's like a business. It's a bus in, in my opinion, it's kind of a business use versus a personal residential use. Yes, ma'am. Well said. Well, this is basically a consumption tax. Yeah, exactly. If yes, you're yeah. using the product, you are you paying pay for, for the product. Yes, sir. Yeah. The only thing I'll say, and I looked at it, and I, I, I didn't look at it real hard because I didn't ask for that information. I didn't think that, to me, that information was not important for my decision on whether or not to increase the, that fee. Plus, again, it's not part of the budget discussion, really, but, um, but it was interesting to look at who they were. But for me, it was more of trying to get that closer to a balance for the county so we're not having to take general fund money in it all the time. Yes, and that's what staff, you know, management's recommending, so I'm all right with that. And I will say, yes, I do use it occasionally. I've been doing a little remodeling. So on Saturday mornings, a lot of times, I ride across those scales and take a little bit out there. Um, and the only thing I had a concern about, and I think it's been addressed since then, I brought it up with David and a couple others, is a um, short waiver of that thousand pound limit per month for residents when a 
natural disaster type thing happens because we have had some winds come through and some trees blown down and stuff and you get a couple of trees in your yard you can get over a thousand pounds pretty quick when you're hauling that stuff off That's and so that was something that i've been told would would be done if and when that time comes up so, yeah. yes sir good deal last thing if there's any funds that when you look across that millage calculation sheet that you knew questions about please ask me um sooner rather than later my goal is to have a third reading where we find out all the issues i want to do as good a job as i can communicating to y'all what management's recommendations are I want to be clear and concise. Oftentimes, I fail at that. Please give me the opportunity to talk to y'all um, before we get to the third reading. But I think this year's budget should be very straightforward. With that, I'm done then, unless there's any other questions. Anyone? I'll just say that um, I'm looking forward to public safety on Friday because I still have questions and concerns about that six cents of a meal. I'm not sure that I stated last time I don't support it at this point, and I'm, you know, I'm still, but I'm open to having my mind changed. So, but I have concerns about it. Any other, oh, sorry. yeah. Any other comments? Then we stand adjourned. <laughs>